G'day and welcome back to Project 300. If you went back 20 years, there was a choice of maybe three or four brands of bar work in Australia. There are a lot more these days, but most of them are unknown brands with no in-house manufacturing. They might do a little design work, then send the CAD file over to China or Thailand, and back comes pretty bar work of often dubious engineering and manufacturing quality. We saw a number of examples of this with the 200 series Land Cruiser, where inadequate engineering led to quite a few cracked chassis over the years. In amongst these new players though, are a small number of really good quality Australian manufacturers. And that is the direction I've decided to go with the front bar on the 300. I discovered Bathurst-based GMF when I first saw their nifty bonnet hinge aerial brackets. Turned out that the owner had a 300 series himself at the time, and they designed a fantastic unhooped front bar for the 300. So I visited the factory and decided on the bar even before my 300 had arrived. You may wonder why I've decided against a full hooped bull bar this time around. Well, after reflecting on my 30 years in four wheel drives running full bull bars, I realised that in all that time, I've never hit anything which required the upper protection from the bar. Probably because I've always avoided rural driving at dusk and dawn when the risk of animal strike is highest. Having a good set of lights helps too. The problem with most bumper replacement bars though, is that they're all for show usually being made from thin folded metal with poor mounting systems. But that is not the case with the GMF bar. The main channel and winch cradle is made from five millimetre welded and folded steel, and the wings are three millimetres. It mounts to the chassis using numerous high tensile bolts and incorporates rated toe points and a five millimetre alloy bash plate, meaning you don't need to add these later. One design feature I particularly like about this bar is that it fully replaces the bumper right up to the guards and headlights, rather than retaining a small part of the plastic bumper like most similar bars. Another great feature is that the bar comes in three parts, so if you do damage a wing, there's no need to replace the whole bar, you can just unbolt the wing and change it over. The design allows for plenty of ventilation for the intercooler heat exchangers. It includes integrated fog lights, an optional integrated LED light bar, which I won't be installing, plus an optional small hoop for mounting driving lights, which I will be installing. There's also plenty of room for a winch, which I'll likely be adding at some stage in the future. The bar comes powder coated black, but I'm going to be colour coding it graphite to match the car as part of the installation. Let's get started. Before you can paint the bar, you'll need to sand the powder coat smooth using 240 grit paper. Four components need to be painted, both wings, the top trim and the bottom trim. I'm leaving the main centre section and all the grill work in powder coat. After sanding, clean the components with wax and grease remover, then apply two coats of suitable automotive acrylic primer. After the primer is dried, rub back lightly with some 1200 wet and dry to get a smooth surface. After sanding, wipe over again with wax and grease remover. Then apply several coats of colour. In my case, this is 1G3 graphite via custom tinted aerosol cans, which are available from most automotive paint shops. After the colour, you'll need to apply several coats of clear automotive acrylic lacquer. After allowing the paint to dry for a day or two, use some cutting compound to bring the gloss out of the paint. Once the bar is ready, it's time to begin the install. Start by releasing the seven button clips on the top grill cover, then remove the cover and set it aside. The next step is to remove the front wheel arch trims or flares. If you have factory trims, first lever open the centre section of each of the five clips, then pull the clip out of the hole. You can use a trim removal tool like this, or alternatively, a small flat blade screwdriver. Once you've removed the five clips, use a four millimeter Allen key to remove the two screws. With all these clips and screws out, remove the trim. It's held in place by spring clips and can be removed by pulling the trim directly outwards from the vehicle. This is best done with just your hands and fingers, starting at the rear end of the trim and working your way up towards the front. Once you get to the last 10 centimetres or so of the trim, use a large flat blade screwdriver to lever off the last two clips holding the trim to the front bumper. Double check that all the clips have come out of the guard, and if not, remove any remaining clips using a trim tool. If you have the OTA aftermarket flares like me, then remove the five clips in the guard, 
followed by the two Allen head screws, then lift the flare off the car. Now move under the vehicle and remove the two front splash trims under the bumper, one side at a time. They're secured by several 10mm head screws plus a 12mm plastic nut. Once the trims are removed, remove the four bolts securing the bottom of the main bumper using a 10mm socket. Now move back up to the grill and unclip the headlight washer hose on the passenger side of the grill. Then move over to the driver's side and unclip the three electrical plugs which supply the front camera, radar, parking sensors and fog lights. Then use a 10mm socket to remove the three bolts securing the top of the grill. Then move down behind the grill and release the three bolts securing the bottom grill support bracket. Now it's time to remove the bumper and grill assembly from the vehicle. Remove the small plastic clip securing the bumper to the guard on each side. Start on one side and use your hands to pull the bumper away from the car, starting where the guard meets the headlight. Work your way around under the headlight and towards the grill. Then pull the grill and the bumper assembly forward to fully disengage the clips. Move to the other side and repeat the process, working back towards the grill. Once it's loose on both sides, you can lift the grill and bumper assembly off the vehicle. Now move to the side of the vehicle and use a 10mm socket to remove the two bolts securing the plastic bumper mounts. Then use a pick or a small flat blade screwdriver to release the clip securing each mount. Carefully remove the bumper mounts from the vehicle, ensuring that you don't damage the front guard by levering it. Then install the supplied button head screws from the mounting kit into the front holes to secure the guards and headlights. Using a trim tool, you can then remove the lower grill support. Use a 12mm socket and spanner to remove the aluminium crush cans from below the headlights on either side. Then use a 10mm socket to remove the four bolts securing each of the plastic ducts on the intercooler heat exchangers. Release the clips on the plastic bumper support and remove it from the aluminium. Then use a 17mm spanner to remove the four bolts on the top of the aluminium crash bar. Retain these bolts for reuse later. Then move under the crash bar and use a 17mm socket to remove the remaining four bolts. Remove the crash bar from the vehicle. It's now time to cut and prepare the guard trims or flares for the new bar. If you have factory trims, put some masking tape on the trim where the guard ends. Then loosely reclip the trim into place and use a straight edge to mark the trim, continuing the guard line. You can then remove the trim and cut carefully along the line using a hacksaw. If you have the OTA flares, again put some masking tape over the flare at the end of the guard. Clip the flare into place temporarily, then put a small mark next to the fold in the guard. Put the cutting template over the flare and mark a line all the way around the flare. Remove the flare and clamp the template into place, then carefully cut along the line using a hacksaw. Remove the tape and the template, then scuff the inside of the flare along the cut. You can then mix up some JB Weld plastic weld epoxy and glue the end caps to the flares. Put some tape over the caps to hold them into place until the glue dries. It's best to leave them for 24 hours for maximum strength. Ordinarily, you'd then fill and tidy up the cap join, then prime and paint the flares. But I won't be doing that until I cut and cap the rear flares with the rear bar installation. It's now time to separate the grill and the assorted cameras and sensors from the bumper. Begin by unclipping the loom from each of the four parking sensors, then disconnect the wiring to the fog lights if fitted. Next, disconnect the hoses from the headlight washers. Using a trim tool, work your way across the bumper, unclipping all of the wiring clips. You can also remove all the clips from the looms and from the water tubes, as the clips won't be used on the new bar. Once all the wiring and tubes are disconnected from the bumper, Disconnect the grill itself with a small flat blade screwdriver by releasing the plastic clips across the bottom of the grill and up the edges. You can then lift the grill and wiring away from the bumper. 
Although they should be interchangeable, I suggest marking the parking sensors so they can be replaced in the same locations that they're being removed from. Then remove each sensor from its bracket by spreading the clips with a small flat blade screwdriver and pulling the sensor from the bracket. You then need to carefully remove the sensor brackets from the bar, levering them up slightly, then cutting through the double-sided tape with a knife to remove each bracket. Next, remove the headlight washers and brackets. Pull the metal clip off the washer, then push the washer unit out through the front of the bar. Then remove the single screw and pull the bracket away from the bar as you carefully cut through the double-sided tape. The remnants of double-sided tape need to be removed from the sensor and washer brackets so that they can be reused on the new bar. Soaking them overnight in wax and grease remover will help remove the tape. Move to the grill and unclip the wiring plug from the front camera. Then remove the camera from the grill using a Phillips head screwdriver. You can then fit the camera blanking plate that came with the new bar into the grill where the camera was removed. You can now take the top centre section of the new bar and attach the front camera to the bar using the supplied bracket, ensuring that it's orientated correctly, aimed level out of the hole in the centre of the mesh. Move back to the grill and cut the fog light plugs off the wiring loom. You then need to join the fog light cables that came with the new bar to the original wiring loom either soldering or using crimp connectors. The green wire is positive and connects to the red wire on the new leads, while the white wire with black trace is negative and connects to the black wire on the new leads. Apply heat shrink tube to the joins and tape up after completion. While the grill's off, I'm also going to be painting it, changing all but the centre pair of silver bars to matte black. These two bars align with the daytime running lights. I'm using Plasti Dip for this process, which is a spray-on rubber coating. The benefit of using Plasti Dip rather than paint is that it can be removed later if I change my mind. I'll provide a link on the website to find the Plasti Dip and report on the durability as part of the regular updates on the build. Once you've applied at least four full coats of Plasti Dip, you can leave the grill to dry overnight. Then run around the edges of the masking tape with a sharp blade and carefully peel off the tape. It's now time to begin assembling the new bar for installation. Place the centre section of the bar upside down on a flat surface. Then attach one of the wings to the centre section using three of the M12 bolts. The bolts should go from the wing through into the centre section, then through a flat washer to the nylock nut. Align the wing so that it's parallel to the centre section, then tighten the three bolts firmly. These bolts may be loosened later on, so don't torque them fully. Once the first wing is firm, move to the other end of the centre section and repeat the process, attaching the other wing. But this time, leave the three bolts loose so that the wing can rotate. Now take the lower centre section of the bar. Attach it first to the firm wing using two M8 bolts from the wing through the centre section and into the serrated nuts. Align the section to the wing, then fully torque the two bolts. I'm using Loctite on these bolts to eliminate the risk of them coming loose. Now attach the other end of the lower section to the other wing, leaving the bolts loose. Now flip the entire assembly over, then attach the upper section to the firm wing using two M8 bolts from the wing through into the centre with serrated nuts. Align the upper edge profile to match the wing. Again, use Loctite and tighten the bolts fully. Then move to the other end, align the centre to the profile of the wing and fully tighten the two bolts. Move back to the lower centre section again, align it to the wing and fully tighten the two bolts on the loose end. You can now align the loose wing parallel to the main centre section channel and tighten the three M12 bolts firm. Now loosely fit the wing support brackets to each side of the bar using the four M8 bolts as shown. Don't tighten these yet. If you're fitting the optional driving light hoop, place it into position, aligning it to be centred correctly. Then attach using the supplied M12 bolts and flat washers. I'm using Loctite to prevent these vibrating loose. Now it's time to fit the rubber trims to the wings of the bar. 
First, wipe the upper edge of each wing with wax and grease remover. Cut the inside end of the rubber square. Align the inside end with the wing as shown, then push the trim over the bar all the way around to the end of the wing. Don't cut the outer end off yet. Move back to the starting point and remove the self-adhesive backing from the rubber slowly, pushing a section at a time firmly onto the bar as you remove the backing. Keep doing this all the way along the wing until you get to around 75mm from the end. You can then trim the end of the rubber to line up with the end of the wing. Then complete the removal of the backing and stick the last section of trim onto the wing. Now put the bar face down onto the table and refit the sensors and headlight washers. First clean around the sensor holes with wax and grease remover. Then after applying 3M VHB double sided tape to the brackets and refitting the sensors into the brackets, centre each parking sensor into each hole and attach them to the bar. Once each sensor assembly is in position, remove the sensor from the bracket and push firmly on the mount to ensure good adhesion before clipping the sensor back into place. Now move on to the headlight washers. Again, clean around the holes with wax and grease remover. After applying VHB tape, place the assembled headlight washers into the holes, ensuring that they're orientated correctly. You can now push the center of the washer back out of the bracket and push hard to engage the adhesive. Leave the washers out of the brackets for now. Now move back to the front of the vehicle and get the mounting kit for the bar. First, place one of the teardrop nuts into each chassis rail as shown. Then place one of the chassis mount spaces onto the front of each chassis rail, orientated as shown. Next, place each of the bar chassis mounts onto the chassis rails. Loosely install one of the original Toyota bolts onto the inside of each bracket. Then insert the supplied rat tail nut into each chassis rail. Move to the outside of the rail and install another Toyota bolt as shown. Then loosely install the supplied 16mm bolt into the outside of the rail and screw it through into the rat tail nut that's inside the chassis rail. Next, align the mounting brackets. Place a rigid straight edge such as a piece of RHS tube onto the two mounting brackets. Clamp the bar on to ensure the two brackets are parallel. You can then install and fully torque all of the front facing bolts on both sides of each chassis bracket to around 125 Nm using Loctite on the reused factory bolts that don't have nylock nuts. Once all the front facing bolts are installed, apply Loctite then fully tighten the M16 bolts that go through the side of each chassis rail into the rat tail nuts. Now move to the underside of the chassis and fit the two supplied gusset angles. Loosely install the supplied M12 bolt and nylock nut to the gusset and the bar bracket. Then apply Loctite and install the two supplied bolts into the bottom of each chassis rail, with the coarse thread bolt going into the front teardrop nut and the fine thread bolt going into the rear factory captive nut. Fully torque all three of these bolts to around 125 Nm. With an assistant, carefully lift the bar onto the car, sitting it on top of the brackets and ensuring that you don't damage the headlights or the guards. You'll have to tilt the bar to be lower at the back to get the wing tips under the headlights as you slide it into place. Loosely install the six M12 bolts down through the center section of the bar and through the mounting brackets. Place flat washers and nylock nuts on the underside. You can then adjust the position of the bar, moving it forward, back, left and right to achieve a gap of around 15mm under the headlights and 12mm to the guard. This gap is required to ensure that there's no contact when the body and chassis flex. Don't reduce the amount of the gap or damage will occur in off-road situations. If the gaps under the headlights and the guard are uneven, loosen the M12 bolts between the centre section and the wings and swivel one or both wings to achieve uniform gaps. Once the bar is straight, level and gaps are consistent, fully torque all of the M12 bolts between the centre section and the wings and the centre section and the chassis brackets. 
Use either a torque wrench or an adjustable rattle gun to achieve 125 Nm for all of the bolts. You can now apply some Loctite and fully tighten the M8 bolts on each of the wing supports. You can now refit the grill. Let all of the wiring looms and the headlight washer hoses fall down into the gap between the radiator and the bar. Then lower the grill into place and slot it into position between the headlights. Re-engage the seal on the top of the grill with the seals above the headlights. Then refit the three bolts securing the top of the grill to the radiator support panel. Then, using a trim tool, remove and discard the lower forward facing plastic clip on the plastic ducts behind the grill as shown. There's one clip located on either side of the car. Next, remove the three captive nuts which are sitting in the plastic bracket behind the grill. You can discard one of the nuts, then insert the remaining two into the slots on either side of the lower section of the grill as shown. They'll lightly click into place. You can then install the two stainless steel brackets that came with the bull bar into the gaps between the captive nuts and the holes where the plastic clips were just removed. Orientate the brackets as shown, then secure either end of the brackets using the supplied bolts. The front bolts go into the relocated captive nuts in the grill, and the rear bolts go through the plastic duct and into the metal bracket behind it and are secured using the supplied serrated nuts. You can then reconnect the large grey and black electrical plugs on the driver's side of the grill. Don't reconnect the small grey camera plug. Instead, connect the new cable that came with the bar's camera relocation kit, then run this cable next to the others down to the bottom of the grill, then across to the relocated front camera and plug it in. Then move to the passenger side of the grill and reconnect the headlight washer hose. We now need to trim the inner plastic guard. First install the four cage nuts into each underwing plate. Put some masking tape on the other edge so that you don't mark it during the next step. Temporarily install the underwing plates. Then use a paint marker to draw a line on the plastic guard around the bottom edge of the plate. Remove the plate, then draw a second line 15 to 20 millimeters in from the original line. Then use tin snips or heavy duty cutters to cut the plastic inner guard along the inside line all the way around and up to the metal guard. Repeat this process on both sides of the car. You can discard the offcuts. Before you refit the underwing plates, it's time to finish off the bar accessories and the wiring. First, insert the headlight washers through the front of the bar, then refit their metal retaining clips. Connect the hoses to the rear of the washers, then reconnect the parking sensors to the wiring looms using the extension cables that came with the bar so that the loom can reach each sensor. Once everything's connected, use cable ties to tidy up all the wiring to the sensors, camera and fog lights, plus the headlight washer hoses so they don't rub or foul on any sharp edges. Ensure that you leave some slack in the fog light plugs so that they can be connected to each fog light. Also ensure that you don't kink or block the headlight washer hoses by over tightening the cable ties. You can then assemble the fog lights into the surrounds and insert the cage nuts. Connect the fog lights to their wiring plugs, then install each fog light assembly into its hole in the bar and secure using the supplied black torque screws and washers. Then install the cage nuts into the triangular underbar mesh sections and install them into the bar on each side, securing with the supplied black torque screws and washers. You can now install each of the underwing plates using the four cage nuts, torque screws and washers. Tuck the trimmed plastic inner guards into the back of the underwing plates. Now it's time to install the supplied bash plate. First, join the two bash plate sections together using the three supplied button head bolts and serrated nuts. Next, move under the car and remove the five bolts securing the factory plastic bash plate using a 12mm socket. Then use a 17mm socket to remove the factory tie down points from each side of the chassis. Fit the cage nut to the centre hole in the stainless bash plate support. Then install it as shown using three of the original factory bolts. Leave the bolts loose for now, just engaging them a few threads by hand. 
Then insert the rear of the alloy bash plate assembly under the two loose bolts as shown. Then lift up the front of the bash plate and attach it to the bull bar support brackets using the four button head screws, washers and serrated nuts and fully tighten. Again I'm using Loctite on these bolts. You can then move back to the rear of the bash plate and fully tighten the three factory bolts. Now move to the front of the bar and install the two mesh pieces on either side of the centre section of the bar using the supplied screws and nuts. The mesh for the passenger side hinges for access to the winch clutch lever if you have a winch fitted. Then install the number plate onto the hinged stainless bracket and install the bracket using the supplied M12 bolts, washers and nylock nuts. These bolts will also secure a winch fair lead if you have one fitted. You can now refit the cut down wheel arch trims or flares. Factory trims are secured with original clips and screws. OTA flares require the fitment of one of the original white plastic clips into the guard first. Then slide the end cap over the plastic clip and re-secure the rest of the flare with the original mounting clips and screws. Complete the bar installation by refitting the plastic radiator trim cover using the original plastic clips. I hope you enjoyed the installation of the GMF front bar on the 300. As you've seen, such an install grows more complex with every new Land Cruiser model that comes out, with numerous sensors and accessories that need to be moved and installed on the 300 series. I am really happy with how the bar turned out. It's great to see a small Australian manufacturer produce such high quality engineering. I think it's by far the best looking unhooped bar for the 300. And compared to some of the imported options, I much prefer the way the bar tapers right up under the headlights and runs all the way around to the guards. GMF are currently working on some trim pieces that will extend the wings of the bar to match in with flares like the ones I've installed. You'll be able to order these as part of the bar once they're available. And I'll add some photos of the trims to the Project 300 website once I've got a set fitted myself. I'll also be adding some driving lights to the bar down the track and likely an electric winch as well. Thanks for watching. Please check out project300.com.au to follow the build and find more information and step-by-step -step guides for all the installs. See you next time.